uh, talk is uh, Francisco uh, Forster uh, talking about the Aloshi uh, broker. Thank you. So first, I would like to thank the organizers for inviting me and also providing some support for me to come. So I, I will. I'm the first speaker of the broker session, so I'll have to do give an introduction of what brokers are. So first, Alerce is the automatic learning for the rapid classification of alerts events a broker, and it's an interdisciplinary project with many institutions in Chile, also some in the US. Um, I cannot pass the slide. Okay, thank you. <laughs> so, okay, so uh, I want you to imagine the, the future time domain ecosystem. And as you know, we ha will have many survey telescopes from the ground, from the space, using light, using gravitational waves and other messengers. And they will be scanning the sky for things that are changing, and they will produce streams of notifications, alerts, uh, at large rates. So no human can look at this. So we need a layer of community brokers. Uh, in the case of LSST, for every visit in the sky, you will get about 7,000 variable stars, uh, 3,000 solar system objects, 200 supernova, 70 AGN, and not more than 500 bogus. So this is about 250 alerts per second. So it's, it's really a lot. Um, brokers will filter, annotate, classify these alerts, and will send an output stream to downstream. Okay, thank you, Paul. Uh, so brokers of brokers will send information also to, to follow-up telescopes as well as brokers. And we will also talk to the user community in real time and also for post-processing or access to all the data. In 2019, there was a call for intent to letters of intent to become brokers. 2020, the call for full proposals, these were sent. And 2021, there was a selection made by the Rubin project and seven community brokers were chosen, three in the US, three in Europe, one in Chile, and two downstream brokers. Um, and you can find more information in this link. So brokers, what do brokers do? Well, we ingest first the stream. That's the main technical difficulty is, is you cannot stream this to everyone. That's why brokers were created. So we ingest and we output streams with annotations, classification filters. We cross match the data. We provide access to our databases through different interfaces and means of accessing. We filter the data, we classify the data, we compute features or characterize the light curves, for example. We provide watch lists or notifications to locations, to your favorite locations in the sky. We connect what follow-up resources. We ingest multiple streams from multiple messengers. We detect outliers, anomalies. We provide regular data releases and make everything as reproducible as possible. So the initial aim of Brokers was just the first part, and this has been growing as we learn what the user community needs. And we'll probably have more things offering in, in all the brokers in, in the next years. So I will talk about Alerce, uh, which is a, the Chilean-led broker, and also is, you may know, this is the oldest tree in the world at the moment, or 5,000 years in the south of Chile. So the questions that we are trying to answer is the nature of transients, uh, so we want to get very fast, very early for transients to detect the outer layers of the, and, and, and understand the progenitors. Uh, the nature of active galactic nuclei, the, the accretion, the changing state, everything that is particular about these objects that needs a rapid reaction. Also in the variable star domain, there are things that you need fast reaction, but also you need a systematic classification of all the events, even if they don't require an urgent uh, reaction. And also solar system. So we get a, a lot of solar system objects, as I, as I showed before. So the team in Alerce is, at the moment, is composed of two PIs, myself and Guillermo Cabrera. Guillermo Cabrera is going to be the next PI of Alerce. 
we have a board of eight, eight uh, scientific board of eight researchers uh, and, and, and strategic board where the funding institution, institutions are represented. We have software engineering, machine learning and astronomy teams that work in different use cases. So we have four parallel teams with six full-time engineers and, and two postdocs uh, and, and many people that are collaborating um, uh, in, different, in different ways. So the lead engineer is Diego Rodriguez shown here. In terms of publications, we have 17 accepted papers, five submitted, many and, and the preparation. Uh, and especially this, this is interesting for us, 155 articles mention Alerce and more than 100 refereed articles uh, use Alerce. And some give the reasons why they give, use, use Alerce. So what data Alerce uses? Well, first we use images. So image stamps, we use multiband time series. Everything coming in the alert, so five sigma in the difference images. Also data releases, five sigma in the science image, and also the less than five sigma in the difference. So this is force photometry. And in the case of CDS, for example, is starting to arrive like one month ago, and, and we are we are working to, to to provide this to the community. We also use images from other surveys, as well as the as the survey that is providing the alert. And cross matches, just table tabular data from other other surveys. So I will focus on use cases because this this conference is more focused on the follow up. So the first use case is: Can we classify objects really really fast? So how fast can you do this? The fastest you can do is with the first alert. So for this, we build a stamp based classifier. It's a convolutional neural network that has been in production since 2019, and it, it classifies things into a very simple taxonomy, but it does it quite well for just using the first alert. And with this, we provide uh, access to the classifications in something called the Supernova Hunter, where the team of astronomers is every day basically filtering the already machine learning classified alerts. So to provide a, a pure sample of classifications, we look at the data release information for the light curve to see if there was no previous activity, we veto, and then we submit to TNS, also providing information about the host galaxy. For this, we use an, a tool to identify the galaxy, which is called Delight. It's PIP installable. And we do this automatic, but we always uh, have a human in the loop checking that everything is correct. This has allowed us to have a large user community around the world, more than 130 countries. And at the moment, we are providing about 15% of all the supernova reports, where the third top a reporter, and about 18% of all the classified supernova, spectroscopically classified supernova, sorry. So next use case is, okay, what about the, the rest of the, the alerts? So this was based on the first alert, but you get many alerts and you can build a light curve. So perhaps we can use a more complex taxonomy. So this is what we do. We have this taxonomy. Uh, we first classify things into transient, stochastic, or periodic. And after talking to the community, we decided that we will use these classes. So here we are already putting some bias. This is the classes that we will use. And the idea is that the community would further classify, uh, specialists will further classify into their favorite classes. So to do this, we compute features. This is a work laid by Paula here. Uh, we compute 174 features for every light curve with at least six dete detection is in one band. And you can see the, the most important features for the different classifiers. So I, I told you this is a hierarchical classifier. So there is a top classifier into the classifier things into transient, stochastic, and periodic. And then the transient, stochastic, and periodic classifiers. And you see colors, supernova models, um, and wise colors, uh, optical colors, and so on. So this is the confusion matrix. And you can see the three branches of the classifier, transient, stochastic, and periodic. So we do quite a good job. And we are working in a new version that includes a new class in the transient branch, which is a TD. So this is work in, pro in preparation for, by Manuel Pavez. Apart from testing in the training set, we test on the unlabeled data set. This is very important because sometimes the confusion matrix looks perfect. When you, when you try in, in real data that is not distributed as the training set, things don't work. So we checked the distribution of classes and we check for the spatial distribution of the galactic and the extragalactic sources and the color distribution, and they all look fine. 
So this is the test we do before putting in production. We provide access to these classifi classifications in the Alerts Explorer, where you can select a classifier and a given class, and you can look at metadata, the light curve, machine learning probabilities, the image stamps, the context, and cross matches from different radios with from different surveys. So what about the past evolution? So the data releases, uh, when no alerts were triggered. We have also looked at this, and this has turned out to be extremely important for outlier de detection. So, and I will show you this example. So this is uh, the alerts coming from a given object. But if you plot the data release information, you see that the light curve looks completely different. So this was an, an outlier in, in our, in, in, in detected by our algorithms. And also we have force photometry, for example, in the transients for the early phase, this, this is very important. And as I told you before, we are including it and will soon be available in the, in the interface. So what about using other telescopes? This will be imp very important for Rubin. Uh, so in the wide fast deep survey, the cadence is not so great. So, but we can complement from with other telescopes. We are doing this in the case of CTF and Atlas. So um, basically what we do is do, we ingest both uh, alert streams and we cross match in real time and we propagate all this information and we get things for example like this so the cyan and orange come from atlas red come from cdf so you get much better light curves if you use both uh, surveys or different surveys and um, so this has led us to all these tests that we have done has led us to change to move away from relational databases like possible to non-relational databases like Mongo. Uh, and I think this will be the future for us in Ruin as well. So non-relational, most likely Mongo, but perhaps something else. Let's see. Can we extend our classifiers to LST light curves? Yes, we have been taking part of the elastic uh, challenge. So this is an example of a light curve that's simulated for LST. And this is the confusion matrix in the training set with simulated data that we got. And interestingly, after many years trying with different classifiers, we always find that random forest, which is the classic machine learning, let's say, was the best classifier. And uh, the first time we beat the random forest with transformers. So this is the technology that is behind ChatGPT, for example. And really, recurring neural networks could not beat random forest. Transformers can. So this is the message. Uh, how can you access all, the, all of these? And I'm finishing the API and client. Um, direct access to the database for complex queries. This is all available in different in use case notebooks. And yeah, so here you can find more information. And last slide, because ISO asked us to provide some, some feedback. So sorry for the <laughs> Okay, so if you, in nature, you have the specialists and the generalists. The specialists occupy narrow niches and they have an advantage when things are very stable and generalists more broader niches and they have an advantage when things change. And I think we're in changing times. So I, I see ISO, uh, my, my bias is, is more like a specialist and Rubin is more like a generalist. So this is kind of attention. And we are the worst. We are like the, the generalists of the generalists because, okay, so but what I think is that we need a tech that can ac and accept this, both worlds, like specialists and generalists. And this is kind of related to this hypothesis-driven or data-driven way of doing science. So this is my, my, my last slide. Thank you. Hey, Francesco, thank you very much for a great talk. You mentioned transformers. Um, 